What's up guys, David here, 122 and it's list day. Ah oh, yes, list day, and uh, today we're doing something fun to celebrate the upcoming uh, Master Rule 4 revision, Master Rule 5 jibber jabber. And we're gonna take a look back at some of my most successful videos, which are the best and worst series of all of the extra deck summoning mechanics. When I was first doing those, I it was the channel was new, I was doing like a green screen with just a bunch of uh, green duct taped together poster board from Walmart. And I was using like a free program I found online to do the editing. So, you know, I always felt that those those videos were just, they, they weren't really done. Like a movie maker doesn't ever finish a film, they just abandon it. So what I present to you now is my definitive vision for my top 10 worst fusion monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! The special edition. Feel that summons three Mogi Mogis. McClunky. I'm just fucking with you. However, I do actually want to redo this list now that we're, you know, getting our old way of summoning from our extra deck back. Uh, and also, I think I'm going to kind of change up the list. I'm not just going to redo it and just have the same monsters. I'm going to, I'm going to look at some of these guys with a, a more modern lens in an attempt to, you know, maybe change things up. So the old video isn't completely obsolete, just, you know, different. I should probably mention that I'm just gonna ignore all those like vanilla fusions that are like really bad and they're super weak and things like that for like two reasons. One, the whole list could potentially be all of those and that's just really boring. So no vanillas or things that are basically vanillas, pretty much. Also like uh, things that are instant fusion targets. I will say this again, cause like in the last two videos, uh, people were like, especially the worst one, people were like, why not the fusionist? Like I had tons of comments about the fusionist. I want to preface this with, I didn't pick anything that's an instant fusion target. It's an instant fusion target, people. You have no reason to suggest the fusionist, unless you're now just being facetious about it. The Barbra Streisand effect, isn't it? But anyway, let's get started. Number 10 is Dark Flare Knight. Now wait, all you Dark Magician fanboys, I know, I know, you can make this thing with Eye of Tamias. I'm going to mention that from the start. However, but why though? When you have like Dark Knight and Amulet Dragon and that new one that we don't have yet that's like super good. Yeah, like why would you make this? But you can, so I guess I'll mention it. However, if you were to summon this thing legitimately and not cheat it out of the de extra deck with your Eye of Tamias, it's a fusion between Dark Magician and the Flame Swordsman. What's annoying about that is Flame Swordsman himself is a fusion monster, so it adds one extra level of annoyance to this card in order for you to properly fusion summon it, which, yeah, you would use Eye of Tamias because there'd be no way of easily doing this. Okay, so you went through all these hoops, you either wasted an Eye of Tamias or you did all this other nonsense to get this thing on board. Was it worth it? <laughs> no. You take no battle damage involving this card. Okay, sure. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Mirage Knight from your hand or deck. Okay, uh, well I guess the question isn't whether or not Dark Flare Knight's worth it, it's whether or not Mirage Knight is worth it. Mirage Knight's a 2800 beat stick that has a constant honest effect, and if it was attacked or attacked, it gains the attack of what it's attacking or being attacked by, and then during the turn in which it was attacked or it did the attacking, it, it banishes itself. So basically, you, uh, you make Dark Flare Knight crash it into something that's too big to deal with, you take no damage, it summons out your Mirage Knight, you can then crash that thing into the thing you can't deal with, and it honests itself, and your opponent takes 2800 battle damage damage and kills the monster, presumably, that you did all of this rigmarole just to kill. Would you ever do that in a Dark Magician deck? No. <laughs> Making the card pretty useless. It's convoluted, it's hard to make, it's a waste of a good fusion card like Eye of Tamias that has a million better targets, and I figured now is a good time to start talking about how bad this thing is because its Eye of Tamias parachute has now been thoroughly poked holes in. Number nine is Phantasm Emperor, oh boy, Trilogig, Trilogig. This Dark Fiend level 10 monster has the following effect. It is made of three level 10 monsters. Oddly enough, you could just make this card an XC monster by painting it black. And uh, it would you wouldn't have to reword the card at all. It's <laughs> when this card is special summoned or you special summon another monster from your graveyard while you control this card on your field, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, and they take burn damage equal to half that monster's attack power. You can only use this thing's effect once per turn. Alright, so it's like literally the worst train tech card ever. Would you ever, ever play this in that deck? No. If you're trying to make like an, uh, uh, an extract play, 
and you need to do burn damage, I don't know why you wouldn't just go into Gustav Max. It takes one less material and you didn't have to use some stupid fusion spell to get it out. It's a waste of resources. It's really just a giant beater. I know I just literally said no beaters, but this thing does have an effect. It's just stupid. And it's really not worth it's, it's what it takes to make. And I think that's probably what really gets a card on this list is that it has a mediocre effect and it's way too much of a hassle to get on the board, thus being the perfect storm of crappy. It's incredibly disrespectful. Granted, uh, I think you can use that stupid, what's it called? Dimension Fusion Destruction, which is like the fusion spell that the Sacred Beast just got out of that their new structure deck. It's not really a fusion spell though. It says fusion in its name, but it's special summons, not fusion summons? So It's a fusion card. It should fusion summon. Okay. This is technically a target for it, however, it doesn't do anything to, to do that. It just, you could do that, I, I guess. It doesn't make it good. Feels bad, man. Although, uh, Sacred Trains Tier Zero. I guarantee it. <laughs> oh, Gem Knights, you did not go unscathed. Gem Knight Aquamarine. Gem Knights are really weird. They have a ton of fusion monsters. A lot of them are just kind of okay, but uh, I think this one's probably the worst. He's made of Gem Knight Sapphire and one other Gem Knight monster. Must first be fusion summoned with the above materials. Okay, cool. If this card attacks, it is changed to defense position at the end of the battle phase. Yay. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, target one card your opponent controls and bounce it to their hand. Okay. So, it doesn't have very much attack, and it's got a big defense, so I think the idea is that, like, you attack with it, and it, like, gets into its stronger position at the end of the battle phase, so you don't have to worry about it so much. Except it has 1,400 attack, so best case scenario, you're just poking them for damage in their life points directly, and then it goes in its 2,600 defense. What year is it? At least it doesn't miss timing when it leaves the field, because it's a when do, not a when can, so I guess that's a plus. It targets, but it's a bounce, so you know, that's- it could be worse. It just seems like its best function is just something that you make along the way in your stupid Gem Knight OTK Wombo combo, and it's not something that, like, you actually want to make to have it do what it does, because it doesn't do anything, <laughs> so... Uh, and I don't even know if the Wombo combo even uses this thing. I don't think it does. So yeah, uh, it's not good. Elemental Hero Marine Neos. Yes, I had to get at least one of these bad boys on here. At least one. And Marine Neos is, is uh, <laughs> weird. It's just another one of those fusions of a fusion. Uh, and one of the fusions, it's a Neo Space fusion. So it's like, uh, it's, it's doubly annoying to make in a bad deck and it doesn't really do anything. It's a perfect storm of you'd never make this thing ever. Must be first fusion summoned with the above stuff. Cool. By shuffling it from your field to the deck. Gross. Shuffling stuff into your deck is bad. Especially shuffling a level 7 vanilla into your deck uh, that you, you know, you got out of your deck so you don't draw it later is not great because you just, you're possibly bricking yourself next turn. Ew. Okay, sure, you kind of need Neos in your deck sometimes because you need to dump it off the effects of other spells, but even still, that's a lot of rigmarole to go through for something that doesn't do very much. At 2600 attack, it's not the worst body you can make, but its effect is ultimately not very good, which is... Once per turn, you can destroy one random card in your opponent's hand. <sighs> I mean, if it lives for a few turns, this is going to be kind of problematic. It has no protection, it's a fusion of a fusion, you have to go through some really ridiculous either cheese it out of the extra deck or go through even more cheese to make it properly just for... <sighs> to pop a card out of their hand. It's also not a discard, it's a destroy, so... Uh, just your luck, you're gonna hit something that's gonna activate an effect. <laughs> so, like, again, its effect, had it been easier to make, wouldn't be the worst thing. But it's so lackluster for something that is so difficult to get on board. Bah. Here we go, Neospatian Twinkle Moss. What does it do? This card's also treated as Neospatian Glow Moss. You can only make it with next, because it's a, a Neospatian fusion card, so... Sure. And it has the strangest effect. When it is attacked or does the attacking, you draw a card and then reveal it. Okay. And it resolves its effect uh, with a different effect depending on what type of card that is. 
If it's a monster, you end the battle phase. If it's a spell, this card's attack becomes a direct attack. And if it's a trap, uh, you change this thing to defense position. Uh, that effect wouldn't be so bad had the monster not had 500 attack and what is it? 1100 defense. So it doesn't really matter what position this card is in, it's pretty weak. It's a pure chance to get it to do what you want it to do. That is never good and it doesn't even get very three very good effects depending on the result anyway. Okay, so you attack something with this, hoping you draw a spell so it can turn that into a direct attack, so you can do 500 damage. Honestly, the only one you'd want to use on your turn when you are attacking. The other two are better when it is attacked. So, other words, useless when you are on the offensive. It's also not... It's also mandatory, by the way. So let's say you draw a monster, you end the battle phase. Cool, so if your opponent's about to beat you up because you have like the weakest fusion monster on board imaginable, yeah, you can end the battle phase, cool. You lived another day. And if it's a trap, it moves itself into its stronger position, uh, except it's not stronger by much, so it's most likely going to die anyway. So that one's pretty much just useless, no matter how you slice it. So the only good one is the first one, and it only works when it is attacked. It's entirely defensive. It puts no pressure on your opponent. It's annoying to make. It's in a bad deck. Ah! The only thing I can say is uh, with how monster heavy decks are now, you can at least be sure that it's going to be using its best one. And if this was your strategy, I don't know why it would be, but if this is your strategy, you could certainly easily get the card to do what you want it to do by building your deck around it. But why though? The best part about making these lists are it just angers all the fanboys of these cards. How oh, the interaction is so good for the algorithm. Yes. Yes, tell me your salt. Cyber Dark Dragon. Imagine being like Zane and dropping your good deck for a bad deck. Cyber Dragons are continuously a solid rogue option throughout the like entirety of their history. Even today, you can still sneak a win because Punch with big number. But nope, I'm gonna switch my deck to something totally dumb and bad. <laughs> Let's do it. This thing is made of three very specific monsters, uh, which makes the card seem even older than it actually is. <laughs> it is old, but it's not three specific fusion materials old, but it is dough. Cyberdark Horn, Cyberdark Keel, and Cyberdark Edge, all three of their original main deck monsters. Wait, this thing cannot be special summoned except by fusion summon. When this card is special summoned, I don't know why it says that, it should just say fusion summoned. When this card is special summoned, you can target a dragon monster in your graveyard, equip that target to this card. This card gains the attack of the monster equipped to it, which is good because uh, this is not exactly the easiest thing in the world to make and it only starts off at a thousand attack power, so uh, it's pretty weak. This also gains a hundred attack for each monster card in your graveyard. So like if you fusion summoned it like properly without some sort of weird cheesy spell, uh, you've just got an extra 300 boost on top of the monster you equipped to it. <laughs> nice. If it would be destroyed by battle, you can destroy the equipped card instead. So it's got some pretty bad battle protection, but at least it's protection, which is more than to be said by everything else that's been on the list so far. Okay, so it's the Cyber Dark boss monster before Cyber Darkness Dragon came out, which is actually a much better monster. And it's just a beat stick that modulates its attack power, and its first effect actively goes in the face of its second effect, because you take a guy out of your grave, which makes you lose 100 attack power that you would have had. However, you're probably gaining more because its attack is probably greater than the 100, but even still, they're kind of counterproductive, which is just really strange card design. Good thing they got those new two main deck monsters, which still doesn't make this very good, because the other one's just better. Uh, but it's at least kind of cool looking, I guess. Power Bond? Does Power Bond work on this thing? I don't remember how Power Bond works. Yes. Yes, you could. Speaking of power bond targets, Cyber Ogre 2, Electric Boogaloo. Now this might be one of the weirdest fusion monsters on the list because it's like a fusion of two of the exact same card, which in and of itself is a two card combo with itself. The way that like Cyber Ogre 1, uh, uh, the Phantom Menace works. Are you brain dead? is that the one on the board is a vanilla, the one in your hand can act like an honest for the one on the board, but it has to be Cyber Ogre, which is like the weirdest kind of two-card combo. It's a two-card combo with itself. Now there are two of them. For a cheesy battle thing. Sounds bad. But you know what you also could do with those two guys? You could fusion summon this thing instead. During damage calculation only, this thing gains half the attack of the thing it's attacking into. Okay, <sighs> what? Uh, okay, let's go through this. You have two options when you have your two Cyber Ogres in your hand. 
you summon one of them, despite the fact they're what, level 5? Level 5, so that's already a struggle, but let's just say you can somehow. Tribute Shokan! <laughs> Your Cyber Ogre numero uno. You can either attack and then pitch the second one for a 2k attack boost. A guaranteed 2k attack boost. Or, you can then fusion summon the two of those things together for your Cyber Ogre 2 and get a half of whatever you're smacking into boost. They're basically the same effect. The time one is better than the other is depending on what you're attacking. The stronger the monster, the more likely you'd want to actually make the fusion monster instead of just smacking one or the other. However, the reason why this is really stupid is because you need a third card to make the f you need like power bond or polymerization or something to make Cyber Ogre 2. So you're probably just better off as a card advantage reason just punching Cyber Ogre 1 into something while discarding your second Cyber Ogre one. It doesn't make any sense to make the fusion monster, because 2k attack power on top of what? 1900 is 3900 attack power. Like, what could you possibly need more than that for? Most extra deck monsters top out at like 3100 max. And 3100 is considered big number, because it's like unusually large. That extra 100 makes it a problem for most other extra deck monsters. Ah, victory. This card is completely useless. I, I'm starting to realize how many power bond things we have on here. Super Robo Yaru and Super Robo Lady, they're the same spot because they're kind of the same card. I really hate that these are on here though because like their effects are actually kind of cool. They're just not very good. They both are really weak with like 1200 attack and like 500 defense and they're both made of the two vanilla monsters Robo Lady and Robo Yaru. Interestingly enough their materials are listed in reverse depending on which one you're looking at. At least according to YGO Pro here. Fun fact. It lists Super Robo Lady's material number one as Robo Lady and Super Robo Yaru's material as Robo Yaru is like the first one and then it flips the other one. So that's that's kind of cute, I guess. They both let you special summon the other one from your extra deck by returning the one on the field to the extra deck. However, you, you can't use that effect the turn you played the one on the board, so you can't just infinitely flop between the two of them just to waste time in a round or something. <laughs> Can you imagine though? And then they each have their own unique battle phase effect, but they're relatively the same thing. Super Robo Lady gets a thousand extra attack permanent boost, by the way, when she does direct battle damage. So, okay, that's cute. She pokes them for direct and she gets an extra thousand attack power, which makes her stronger. However, she'll lose it if she swaps out for Super Rabi, Super Rabi, Super Rabies Raru. Chicken Dude. They're Chicken Dude now. Chick will lose her a thousand attack points when she summons Dude. However, what does Dude do? Dude gets a thousand attack power when he attacks a monster. So, okay, so they each have a different function. That's cute. If they were just like quick effects, they'd actually be kind of cool. Like if they were quick effects, they wouldn't be good, but they'd be playable. And you could do something cheesy with them during a battle phase, like poke, swap, poke. Like that alone would be neat. It also lets you get around like a power bond effect. But nah, we can't have nice things. They're also super old. So that's probably why they didn't make them quick effects because <laughs> A monster with a quick effect back when these came out would have been like an inconceivable thing. <laughs> so <laughs> they would have been like, they'd be like, you could do that. Is that legal? So yeah, I get why they don't. It's just a sad thing that they don't. All right, finally a card that really should be number one. Evil Hero Dark Gaia. Oh! <laughs> Fucking suck. Even as far as evil heroes are concerned, there are worse ones, but enough people complained about this thing being on the last one where it's now a meme on my channel. So I think I actually bumped him down <laughs> to number two. In like three years when I make the another redux of one of these, he'll be number one, I promise. Okay, to be fair, Dark Fusion, the thing that you make this thing with, does bestow it a non-targeting protection for the turn it's played. So. That's at least kind of cute. It's weird that you can also use Dark Calling on this thing, but that doesn't give you the protection, which makes it a, a strictly worse card. Okay, Fusion lets you use Hand and Field. Calling is Hand and Graveyard, but you don't get the protection. So, okay, yeah, I, I, I guess that's the trade-off. Okay, so you used this weird Fusion card that has a, a lateral retrain, neither of which that anyone in the modern game has ever heard of, to make this. What does it do? Annoy Davinator with every single comment it's ever mentioned in. That's its effect. Must be fusion summoned with dark fusion, cannot be special summoned other maze. Woot. Its attack is equal to the combined attack of the fusion materials to make it. it. Is made of one rock monster and one fiend monster. And when it declares an attack, you can change all your opponent's defense position monsters to attack position. When I first put this card on the list, I said, 
okay, so on average it's not going to have very much attack power because you probably didn't make it with two things that were relatively big. It's probably got around 3k attack because you used like two level fours to make it. Uh, your opponent's probably not putting a hell of a lot in defense mode, so its effect's probably essentially useless. That's actually more true now because with Link monsters and a lot of decks Link spamming despite the fact we were changing to Master Rule 5, uh, there's not a lot in defense mode as it is, so that's even more useless and will never do anything. And, uh, okay, so I understand you could use, like, Valkyra on the Magna Warrior and that big thing, uh, make this thing, like, stupidly huge. Fine. I understand that. But why? It's so bad! You need to play these two huge bricks in your deck just so you can fusion summon this stupid thing with an absurd amount of attack power, and ultimately, it's just a big beater. It's a damn good thing your opponent doesn't play battle traps anymore because they would deal with this thing pretty well. Are there worst evil hero fusions? I'm pretty sure, but <laughs> I'm just gonna dump on him because. Dishonorable mention! Super Viacroid Stealth Union. Now, some people might actually say that this thing should be on the list, and I think it was on the old one. But, uh, I've done some thinking, and I think he's not quite as bad as... He's not quite as bad as I think everyone thinks he is. He's made of three very specific monsters, which is, uh, at three specific Viacroid monsters, which is a bad deck. It's incredibly disrespectful! So, yes, he's very hard to make. But he can target a non-machine monster in the field and equip it to him. So, like, he's got, like, a, a, an absorb ability, which is actually, that's a pretty solid effect uh, for removal. Like, there's not much better than that, because it, like, gets it off your opponent's board. They no longer have access to the card. That's good removal. I don't think anyone's going to take that away from him. And if it's got a guy equipped to it, it can attack all monsters your opponent controls. Okay. Big number. Sadly, it has its attack when it attacks but it does get to do piercing damage against the defense position monster. Okay, so the having attack thing's bad. It also, its original attack is half, so you could always boost it, and the boost doesn't get half, just the original attack, but it seems like it's permanent, so even if you get to attack all your opponent's guys, he's like getting weaker every time. Yeah, that's terrible. That's why he's a dishonorable mention. Like, he could be on the list. If not for his good removal effect, he, he would be extra bad. Having 3600 naturally attack is completely wasted. And his other saving grace is you could technically summon this thing with Cyber Dragon Nova's effect. He doesn't have any restrictions, so you could cheese him out. And like, because he's got that good removal and you could cheese him off a of Nova, he's not a terrible target for Nova. If like, oh, I lost my Nova. I gotta go into this thing to suck up a dude. That's a reasonable play. <laughs> you have Barbaroid and other things that are better, like objectively better, and you'd almost never go into this, but you could, and I think that alone was enough to get him as like a number 11. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout, you can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. All right, number one, um, can't remember if this card existed. I don't think it did when I first made the first list. Because if it did, I can't see, I, I'm pretty sure it didn't exist. Tamias the Knight of Destiny. Oh man, we got two legendary dragon cards on here. It feels bad, man. He is made of three very specific monsters. Legendary Knight Tamias, Legendary Knight Hermos, and Legendary Knight Critias. You contact fuse him, so that's cute. Uh, during damage calculation, uh, during either player's turn when it's attacked or is attacked, uh, you can make its attack equal to the highest attack on the board currently. And uh, when it's destroyed by battle, which it's going to be because it just smashed into something with the same attack power as itself, you can special summon three Legendary Knights from your deck, hand or graveyard, so probably it's fusion material, ignoring their summoning conditions. Wait, what was that last part? Yes, it's three monsters can only be special summoned by the effect of, uh, what the hell's the name of that stupid card? Well, a legendary heart, this normal spell card. You pay 2,000 life points, you banish the three legendary dragon spell cards from your hand or graveyard to special summon three legendary knights from your deck, hand or graveyard, with three different names. So you sack the three to get the three. That's what it does. Now you've got those three on board, you can contact fusion for this stupid free confusion that doesn't do anything. That is so much advantage wasted. Okay, uh, okay, you have Eye of Timaeus, the Claw of Hermos, and the Fang of Critias in your hand, and you somehow were not able to activate any of them 
So, and so instead you play Legendary, or Heart of Legend, or the hell is the thing? Legend of Heart. Legend of Heart. Go nag a million to summon three useless dudes. Their only function is to summon one big useless dude. But like, not only that, like, technically speaking, the three dudes you get off of that card are actually better than the stupid fusion monster. When they hit the board, they're like, pop a spell or a trap. That's pretty solid. And then they each have an individual effect when they're targeted for an attack, which, you know, that's pretty lousy because your punch is not going to do that, if at all possible, not to let you get any advantage or anything. But they are individually better than the stupid thing that they make. It's just so you can smash into an infinitely attack-powered geh. Oh my god, it's so season four! For now, there's a force beyond infinity! My Knight of Destiny! Yeah, this card's absolutely ridiculously bad and extremely niche, and it's oddly difficult to make in a deck that you'd have to precisely build around, and it's not even the best strategy that deck could do. There's a lot going wrong for this guy. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. Um, like I said, I wanted to be a little different than the last one, uh, but I did want to update it because looking at that old one, holy crap. Uh, production value alone was what I desperately wanted to do, to, to, to update. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And if you guys want to be on the next one, which is going to be, uh, we did both the fusion ones at once, but uh, if you want to do like the, the synchro one or the XE one or the pendulum one or whatever, get in the discord, like, and subscribe, you know, so we know that you're part of the community and you can get in and you can help us. And it's a lot of fun because we get to argue for like hours and hours about which card is more crappy than the next. Remember guys, if you don't troll the better will, and I'll see you guys next time. The Destiny Board tells me that you should subscribe to the channel, or you can watch some of these other videos. Now excuse me, my Millennium Ring has detected another Millennium Item. Oh, it's... it's just Merrick. Akora, did you remember to get milk? We're out of milk. This milk is bad. It was terrible.